So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Amesy's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So I'm out on this beautifully rainy Sunday. I had a hell of a nor'easter come through yesterday, a, a fall nor'easter. took down a lot of trees, but that's another story. I'm out here running my errands, my morning errands, and I come across something really cool that I want to share with you guys. And that is whatever the hell this is. I have no idea what I'm looking at, but I know it looks cool. Just uh, just driving by, and I saw it. There's a place I drive every day. Oh God, it's a pook. I should have known that. This is awesome. So much want. So, so much want. What is this, a Pinsgauer? Is that what they call this thing? A pook Pinsgauer? I've never, ever, ever seen one in real life. I've only seen pictures of these things. Wow. Oh yeah, 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 got it right. Wow. Never seen one in real life. How much I want to take this thing out in the pit and rip around on it, you have no idea. Wow. How cool is this? I don't have any details. I don't know anything about it other than it's made by the company that makes mopeds or made mopeds. Look at that. Get you right up. We'll get you right up under it because I think that's where all the coolest stuff. Look at the ground clearance. Those portal axles. Those look like portal axles to me. All the way around. Wow. Wow, guys. What a piece of hardware. Look at this. Take the whole battalion out for a ride. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, portal axles, tubes, all sorts of levers and switches and stuff that control stuff. <laughs> Boy, there's nothing like a nothing like a cool military vehicle to get me going on a Sunday morning. I don't know what this uh, what's this like a sway bar system or something? Boy, I, it's not very often that I'm a little lost for. Uh, I lost for details on a vehicle like this. I just never knew I'd be face to face with one. Look, wheel chocks. Wheel chocks right in the wheel well. Man. <laughs> the drive line on this thing is almost a frame by itself, huh? Oh, boy, the drive line on this thing is like a whole member on its own. That would be the drive shaft in that big tube right here. Six by six. Disc brakes all around. That's kind of interesting. Would have expected there to be drums on something of this age. Wow. Wish we could get to the engine bay. But I'm not going to go opening doors and stuff. I learned my lesson on that. What oh, hell of an electric winch. Weird. I would have expected the winch to be hydraulic on a vehicle like this. Boy, anybody got any details on this thing? Leave them down below. Horsepower, what engine that might have in it. The onboard air. Switches and stuff to flip everywhere. Boy, this is a this is a control freak's dream. I've seen pictures. I've seen a picture of these things being hoisted onto ships. I believe they use these right here to lift them right up on the wheel hubs. So cool. Wish there was a for sale sign on it or something. I'd love to. I'd love to pick the brain of the owner and maybe take it for a drive. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll do some digging tomorrow when I come to work and see if I can find out who owns it. A lot of people in this area, we're right here in Plastow, a lot of people in Plastow know me and know my name and uh, maybe we'll get a good video of this thing up on the lift. Boy, I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to take it on my lift, I'd love to go around the block, I'd love to go through some mud with it. Boy, so cool, so cool get you up in the uh let's get up in the cockpit a little better i can't really see it from where i am the thing's kind of kind of tall uh, it, it's taller than i figured these would be for some reason i thought these were a lot smaller but i can't see inside so i'm gonna have to watch the video of the interior myself wow yeah like i said if you guys know anything about these which militaries use them and all of that I'd love to I'd love to know wooden rub rails that's kind of cool if you, if you 
rub up against a tree or a rock and break one, you can probably fix it with an old fence post. So cool. Don't these, uh, don't these float? Nah, this thing can't float. This thing would sink like a stone, I bet. But wasn't there a variant, like a duck boat version of these too, I believe? <clears throat> Boy, so cool. So, so cool. So what, the engine feeds down into this drive shaft, feeds into the transfer case off the side. Is that how that works? That's a little, uh, a little cart leading the horse on that, I think. Usually the, the main drive line goes into the transfer case, then it splits off to the front, but this does it probably a little more, a uh, little more, able to transmit a little more power maybe. progress in modern life means ever greater demands in the field of transportation. The latest development of Steyr Daimler Poop, the Pinsenskauer, named after a hardy and reliable breed of alpine horse, is especially fit to carry out the toughest transport jobs in any kind of terrain. The, the Pinsenskauer's performance and range of application may be judged from the following data. An 87 DIN horsepower gasoline engine, air-cooled, Top speed of over 100 kilometers per hour, a capacity of one ton as a four-wheel vehicle and 1.5 tons as a six-wheel vehicle, all-wheel drive and differential locks. This accounts for the Pinsgauer's ability to cope with transportation jobs safely and fast under the most difficult terrain conditions on gradients of up to 70% across rubble, stone, sand or snow. Pinsgauer's special driving qualities are achieved by a number of technical refinements. The chassis is composed of a front and rear axle connected by a sturdy and torsion-resistant central backbone tube. The wheels are sprung independently by means of jointed cross-shaft axles. The result is superior ground adhesion of all four wheels when working in open country. The engine is located above the front axle. Power is transmitted to the front and rear axles via the gears a drive shaft, intermediate gearing, and a shaft in the center tube. The jointed cross shaft axles are designed as portal axles, which permits greater ground clearance. At the axle ends, the front axle is equipped with homokinetic joints to permit the proper angle of lock. The vehicle has an air-cooled four-stroke four-cylinder engine with a crankshaft supported in five bearings and a piston displacement of 2,500 cubic centimeters. It produces 87 DIN horsepower at 4,000 RPM and is expressly designed for favorable developments of the torque. Maximum torque is already reached at 2,000 RPM. Air cooling means trouble-free operation at extreme temperatures and under all climatic conditions. Two downdraft carburetors for off-the-road operation assure good starting and unproblematic performance even when the vehicle is at a considerable slant. For driving on roads, there is an all synchromesh transmission with five gears forward and one reverse. Shifting in the intermediate drive offers an additional five gears forward and one reverse, which are only for use off the road. As the diagram shows, a shaft leads from the intermediate gearing to the front axle. This can be engaged on the go for all-wheel drive. This engagement is effected hydraulically and can be made while the vehicle is in motion. Both the front and rear axles have a differential lock. It too can be engaged hydraulically.
The body consists of molded sheet metal parts. Their supporting elements are lightweight, since the set tube chassis absorbs all driving stresses. The frame components are clamped in a welding fixture and spot welded. Then the suitably prepared body sheets are welded on. The finished main body assemblies go next to the bonderizing unit and are chemically cleaned. Here the surface is given an anti-corrosive coating of zinc phosphate to which lacquer adheres particularly well. The base lacquer coat is applied by dipping. With this process, hollow spaces not easily reached are well wetted. After intermediate drying, four more coats of lacquer are applied by spraying and are individually baked. An anti-noise coating is sprayed onto the underside of the body. This also serves as protection against stone throw. The body is thus protected against all influences, such as damp, stone throw, and condensation in hollow spaces. After the electric wiring has been installed, the body is joined to the chassis on the assembly line. Then comes the final assembly of the electric elements, instruments, wheels, seats, and hood. Immediately after completion on this assembly line, which is just next to that of its little brother, the Hofflinger, every Pinsgauer is subjected to an acceptance test by the factory. At regular intervals, more exhaustive series examinations are made by random sampling. Test drivers then thoroughly try out the behavior of these vehicles in all driving situations. For example, on the road in all forward gears and speeds off the road after shifting to intermediate drive. Driving with all-wheel drive and differential lock in difficult country. Performance and behavior of the vehicle under these conditions and the dependability of all component parts. Two basic models of the Pinskauer are manufactured. The two-axle model, 4x4, with a payload of one ton. And the three-axle model, 6x6, with a larger load area and a payload of 1.5 tons. On all vehicles, the load area can be converted into seats for passenger transport. Two rollover bars ensure effective protection for all occupants. The engine is located inside the driver's cab, and after lifting the appropriate covers, all assemblies are easily accessible from all sides for maintenance work. One of the first clients for the Pinskauer was the Swiss Army, which subjected several prototypes of the vehicle to toughest testing conditions for a full year. In addition to the two models we have already mentioned, which were used as personnel carriers, there is a radio truck model whose fitness for military use was also tested. The tests, the films of which you are now seeing, consisted of long and grueling cross-country trials, plus a series of fundamental technical tests. In traction tests, the maximum pull of the vehicle and its ground adhesion were tested under greatly varying conditions. The dynamometer shows a pull of two tons. This proves that all-wheel drive in combination with differential locks makes possible a maximum utilization of power up to the limit of tire traction by the non-slip drive of all wheels. The trials were repeated on various surfaces such as hardtop roads, gravel, grass, and so on.
The recording tape supplies information about the time slope of the pull when the drawn vehicle is braked. In winter, the best results are obviously obtained with snow chains on. Low temperature test. Optimum performance in winter is one of the most important demands made on an all-purpose vehicle. Easy starting and perfect operation were confirmed at temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees centigrade. On the chassis dynamometer, the engine function and the entire powertrain are checked. The carbon monoxide content of the exhaust is checked by a CO tester. This has a double purpose good fuel utilization, and the demands of environmental protection. The Pinskauer meets the required values. Using the so-called Heiselder wheel, exact measurements of top speed, acceleration, and vehicle stopping distances can be made. In addition, a decelerometer is employed. The Pinskauer is equal to all demands. The following cornering and swerve test provides information about the Pinskauer's behavior under the effect of centrifugal force when taking curves. The Pinskauer shows only modest side tilt values, behaving like a passenger vehicle with excellent road holding properties. The installed recorder registers the accelerations and decelerations of the body under these conditions and confirms the vehicle's good drivability. A not insignificant part of the test series were rollover trials, which showed the following results. In terrain with a gradient of approximately 20%, the vehicle remained on its side after capsizing. In steeper terrain of 70 to 80%, the interior was protected for some time when overturning by the two strong rollover bars. This means a high degree of safety for the occupants. impact test demonstrated that the body remained relatively undamaged at an impact of approximately 50 kilometers per hour. The center tube chassis likewise showed great resistance to deformation. The central feature of all tests were repeated cross-country driving under the toughest conditions. Here the technical resources of the vehicle proved their worth. Water with a depth of 60 centimeters and more can be forded by the Pinskauer without difficulty, since the necessary splash proofing is provided. The Pinskauer's fording depth is 600 millimeters. The ground clearance obtained by the, the portal axles makes it possible to travel on deeply rutted ground. The Pinskauer's ground clearance is 335 millimeters. Climbing capacity is first rate, subject to the surface and the tire traction limit. The latter is 70% for the Pinskauer, and even more on hard surfaces like concrete. Traversing narrow ditches with steep walls depends on the greatest possible overhang angles of the vehicle. Thanks to the Pinskauer's forward control design, the angles are 43 degrees front and rear, very favorable for cross-country operation. Crossing short obstacles rising from the ground demands good ground clearance. The Pinskauer's is 275 millimeters. After years of development and tens of thousands of kilometers hard testing on mountain routes and sand tracks, long drawn out winter tests and military trial runs, the Steyrpuch Pinskauer is now being manufactured by experts in specially built new works. 
it is able to solve the most difficult transportation problems under all climatic conditions. That is why this cross-country vehicle is a prime example of Steyr Daimler Pook's guiding principle, products for special demands. Cool, so cool. Well, all right, guys, just a short little blast of a video. I just, I, I needed to take a look at this because it is just cool as school. It is just too cool, boys. Wow, <laughs> that is awesome. Well, all right, guys, I got to get all of my errands. On that note, and until next time, leave the comments down below if you know anything about that that I don't because I don't know a lot about it. I didn't even have time to look on Wikipedia to get a few specs and stats. I just pulled over and had to share it with you guys. Well, all right, guys, like I was saying, on that note, and until next time, keep it out of the cabbage. <laughs>